um, to go this way in the message tonight. Um, and we're going to be talking about the rapture a little bit. I don't think we're too far off, do you? <laughs> uh, it seems to me um, it looks like everything's winding up pretty quick. And, uh, and I want to be ready to go. Um, I want to be ready, ready to go. Um, if you would, I'd like for you to turn in your Bibles uh, to Philippians chapter 3. And we want to begin there. Uh, we'll be going here, there, and yonder um, in our scripture reading a little bit. Uh, but I want to follow the Lord and do my best to, to give to you what, what He uh, uh, has touched my heart about. Um, here in Philippians chapter 3, uh, we want to look over at verses 10 and 11. And uh, here the Apostle Paul uh, speaking, or writing rather. He says here in verse 10, that I, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. So here he is giving a specific avenue. Um, and we'll backtrack a little bit in just a few minutes and a few other verses. But I want to read these two one more time before moving on uh, into this. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection... The fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Our thought here, um, talking about the rapture and being rapture ready. Um, of course, uh, there is some requirements on our part uh, to be rapture ready. And then also in thinking about this in consideration of there being glory in the rapture. Um, and I can't wait for that. Uh, there will be a great glory and power. Uh, the transition, I can't hardly wrap my, my mind around. Uh, but I want to be a part of it uh, in a moment's notice. Help me Lord today. So, in considering that there be glory in the rapture, the hope of participating in this biblically sound doctrine, a lot of folks or some folks now don't believe uh, that it's still a biblically sound doctrine, uh, uh, the rapture. Uh, I still believe that. Some have dismissed that as being biblically accurate, uh, but I found no reason in the Bible to dismiss it, uh, but only to hope towards it. I believe that teaching is uh, as clear and as sound as anything else. Uh, and I believe we're awaiting that. And like I said a few minutes ago, I don't think uh, that we're very far off from it. Uh, <clears throat> but when we see this, found in the scripture about the rapture, not the word rapture, rather, um, uh, but being called up together uh, to meet the Lord in the clouds. And all of that is very much conditional on my part. Uh, and we'll talk about this. Uh, and actually by this, I mean that our spiritual condition must be genuine and upright before God. We can't play games now and be in and out now and expect to make it then. We're going to have to be genuine in our faith and our relationship with God and we're going to have to be upright in our living. Uh, what is in here comes out and the Lord knows where we stand and uh, it would do us well for us to know where we stand. Uh, because it is coming, and I think sooner uh, than later, to participate in this grand and glorious event foretold in the Bible. In our previous scripture reading, with also 
uh, considering a couple of other preceding verses. The Apostle Paul seems to make clear that to know him, to know Jesus, and his righteousness begins with faith in Christ. That we might not stand in our own righteousness, but that which is of him imputed unto us by faith. We must be found in Christ in order to know him. But when we go back uh, in these other couple verses, and I want to go back even further than that. Actually, yeah, let's start with verse 6 in the same chapter of Philippians 3. It says here, Paul, um, and he was referring back um, uh, to his former personal years um, uh, in what he did before he was uh, translated into the kingdom of God, uh, before he got saved. But he said, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those things now I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. I think it is so interesting um, when you begin to look at Paul's view here. Um, when he, he's considering all the former things, and not only the former things, well, I guess, I guess that would, uh, I could say that, because primarily where he's standing at that moment, he's moving, looking at moving nearer and closer in, the, in relationship with Jesus. So all of those, those former things, all those things that he thought were, were gain to him. And, and even currently at that time, he says, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. It seems as though that he got a real taste of the relationship and life of Jesus Christ that, that trumped anything else in his life. There was nothing else in his life that, that could ever supersede or could even come close to being equal with what he found in the Lord Jesus Christ. And what he found in relationship with him. And he says, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. He says, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. For him I've lost it all. Everything, everything gone. I lost it all. But it meant nothing to him. He, he come to the realization. He says, and I do count them but done. I, I do count them all waste. I, I count them as nothing. I think it's interesting to see his perspective here. He says, for the Lord I have suffered the loss of everything. But I'm not missing anything, in other words. I've lost it all for him, and I've suffered all this for him. And, but he says, I do count them but dung. There's, there's nothing worth holding on to. There's nothing compared to what I found in him. And now that I comprehend Christ in, in, in a little bit, just I comprehend him a little bit. I've I've tasted a little bit, and 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 the reason I say this, um, pray for me here. Lord, help me today. the The reason that I'm saying this 
is that even with us now, um, uh, when you serve the Lord five, ten, fifteen years, and and you try to draw near and closer to the Lord, the closer you get, the more you find out that there is. Uh, the greater and the deeper and the uh, uh, how much greater and that that's what I'm I'm saying here that that he's tasted of this and he's experienced this and and but there's nothing nothing compared to what he has experienced and tasted and have seen. In his relationship with Jesus. So he, he comprehended here that, that all those things, they actually do mean nothing. That I count them as waste, as dung. Uh, they mean nothing to me. And, and what I'm getting at here initially is how, how do we consider it right now? Well, how do we consider our relationship and, and tasting of these heavenly things and, and having a relationship with Christ Jesus? How do you compare it right now? Lord, help me. Is, is there anything that is persuading us, it is influencing us, in, in, in taking up a, a part in our life that is keeping us from, from possibly moving on in a deeper and greater relationship with Him. What, what I'm seeing here with the Apostle Paul is, is this completely sold out and, and dismiss, dismissing the things of the world, the world being dead to him, him being dead to the world, but alive unto God. And, and focusing in with all of his heart. And as we go through here, we see that I may know him. Just that I might know him. And the uh, Lord help me today. I don't. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'm. I'm trying to move us in more of the Apostle Paul's. Um, Lord help me today. Uh, his perspective and desire in touching the Lord, but yet seeing it grander and greater than anything else here, but still trying to find the avenue. To make sure if by any means I might be found among the resurrected dead. Uh, uh, if by any means I might be found there. So in other words, looking at a particular avenue here that nothing in the world could influence or move us off of it. But that he, he means more. And that He is more important than anything. And more than anything else that I might find myself part of the resurrection of the dead. So uh, you pray for me and we'll keep digging here. Um, until we get this across. He says here, I want to read, that, read this again. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss. For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but, but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ Jesus, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And then... He carries on here that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means. He's talking about a particular avenue to take, 
a particular road to take that if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. So do you feel that same way inside of you today? Uh, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. That, that means more to me than anything else I might attain here. Uh, being a part of the resurrection of the dead. Uh, thank the Lord. I see uh, uh, some folks from Athens coming in. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for them. Glad to see them here. But I, I hope you're following me here uh, in this. That if by any means I might attain, being a part of the resurrection of the dead, being faithful until death, seeking God all the way, it, it completely, that, that was Paul's mindset. Uh, uh, in his personal relationship to the Lord. There was a lot of other things that were going on, but he was working to attain. <laughs> and, and, and with us, uh, I, my question is to you, is that what you're working for? Is that the avenue that you want to take? Is that the avenue you desire to take? That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means a specific avenue, working toward the most important thing, and that is making it home. Amen. Being ready when that time comes, more important than anything else in the world, is being tied into him more than anything else. And, and that's what I'm encouraging us to here tonight. More than anything else. There's nothing else worth it. Paul knew it. I count it all but dumb. <laughs> I count it all but waste. And I want to be tied in and I want to move down this avenue. Because I want to attain. <laughs> that means more than anything. And so that's what I'm encouraging us to today. Being rapture ready. <laughs> And being a part of the glory in the rapture. Being part of the, the same power that raised Christ up from the dead. That will raise us up from the dead. Hallelujah. Great power and great glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm beginning to feel a lot, lot better now. Thank the Lord. So... Uh, this is what I'm encouraging us to. Moving in this same mindset. Uh, thank the Lord. All right, here we go. Um, let's see here. Um, moving on here a little bit. The Apostle Paul expresses here again, I'm going to read these two verses and then we'll move forward. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain or that I might arrive at or unto the resurrection of the dead. The resurrection of Christ was a glorious manifestation of divine power. Paul declares that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Um, here describing the spiritual depth of Christ and the desire to discover, live, move, and partake of his divine power. While also understanding the importance of the fellowship of his sufferings. Uh, I want to go back here just for a minute. That when Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Uh, uh, there he is. Two different aspects to that. Um, through his resurrection, uh, we can experience that same life-giving power in us now. Uh, by his resurrection, we can be resurrected that. Knowing Christ also entails participating in his sufferings. And, and we have to understand that that. He suffered, we will also. 
he was hated, we will be hated also. Um, uh, but knowing Christ, knowing Christ, and knowing Christ intimately and deeply many times comes through suffering. Many times that's what brings you into a closer and intimate walk in relationship with God. Paul was saying, and the fellowship of his sufferings, still moving down that same avenue. And, and it really speaks loudly uh, due to his close and near walk with the Lord. Um, and, and there's more to be said on that, um, but I want to encourage one part of it. That knowing Christ entails participating in his sufferings, Paul desires to share in the Lord's sufferings because they bring him into a deeper and more meaningful relation with him. Companionship in sorrow establishes the most intimate and lasting of ties. Companionship in sorrow. Walking with Christ in suffering will bring about a deeper and greater companionship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That, that brings about a greater nearness to the Lord in those moments. As, uh, uh, so, so I want to, in that aspect, I want to encourage us still in this avenue. There's three or four aspects here that all build uh, uh, to, well, I can't do anything here without repeating what I've said so far. Um, uh, but it all builds in, in his relationship and that most important thing is spending eternity, uh, eternity with Christ. First Corinthians 15. I want to continue here in talking about the rapture, talking about the resurrection of the dead. And uh, I want to bring out a few verses here uh, in this. First Corinthians 15. And we're going to begin <clears throat> with verse 12. Well, if I can get over here to it. 1 Corinthians 15, beginning with verse 12 here. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. In other words, it's useless. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God, that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is, Christ, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain or useless. You are yet in your sin. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If, if in this life uh, only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. I was thinking when I was uh, uh, preparing for this, I was thinking about what's being promoted now in the world uh, and has been for a long time. And you hear about the Muslim religion and you hear about the Koran and, uh, of course, their, their holy book. Um, within the Koran, and I can't remember just exactly how it is said, uh, but it is said they did not kill him, they did not crucify him. Or it may have been they did not crucify him, they did not kill him. It was one way or the other there. And in the Quran, it's talking, it's talking about Jesus. They did not kill him, they did not crucify him. And if you take away the death of Christ, you've taken away the whole foundation of Christianity. It's all built upon that. Uh, and, and that's what's being promoted. And, and I, I, I don't want to go into a lot of the other opinions about what, what they thought did happen. 
Uh, but Christ did die. And He was raised. And He was the first fruits. And we who are faithful will come in behind Him. Amen. So here, uh, I, I just that came to my mind as I was reading this. Uh, but we know. And the reason that we know is what I was talking about a few minutes ago. You know He was raised because what happened in you here? That's how you know He was raised. Lord, help me today. Uh, hallelujah. I, my, I want to go maybe in a little different track here. Um, I was talking to a bishop one time and, and we were talking about evidence, uh, the historical reliability of the resurrection and all those type things. And you get into archaeology and, and all of the um, uh, artifacts and all these things that point back to the validity of the Bible. And he was saying to me, he said, um, uh, uh, if you were to bring me a piece of wood and said it was from the ark, he said, I doubt the wood. And the reason he said that is because there's a greater conviction and understanding about uh, what happened in here. In other, in other words, I know that Noah built the ark. And I know that it withstood the flood. Because of the witness that I have in here. Not because of a piece of wood somebody brought to me. Hallelujah to God. The witness in here means more. Uh, and is more substantial. And is stronger uh, than any other outside evidence. And I, I'm not trying to tear down those things. That point to the validity of the Bible. There's many things that have proved its truth. But those things don't make me know that it's true. In here is what makes me know that it's true. In here, I know Christ died and rose again. In here, I know that that took place. Hallelujah to God. It is in here. Hallelujah. As we carry on here to verse 20, it says, But now is Christ risen from, from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all, all be made alive. Thank the Lord. I want you to turn over with me uh, to verse 35. And I want to read here a little bit. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? <clears throat> thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened or made alive except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain, it may chance of wheat or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh as the Apostle Paul is explaining, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, of fishes, uh, and another of birds. There are, all, there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Uh, the glory of the natural man is one, but the glory of the heavenly man is quite another. Uh, there is one glory of the sun, he says, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. 
It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Uh, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead shall also quicken. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we also shall be raised by that same power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, of course, and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not the first which was spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord, hallelujah, from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. <laughs> I don't know what we will be, but I do know that we shall be like Him. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward. <laughs> Hallelujah. To being changed in a moment. Or being raised in great power and glory. To meet the Lord in the air. Hallelujah to God. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Hallelujah. And I talked about here, about being rapture ready and that there are, uh, 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 it is conditional. It is conditional. And, and as I was reading that in verse 50, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We've got to be careful. I'm going to use this a different way. Um, uh, uh, sin and holiness uh, cannot cohabitate within the same vessel. Amen. Hallelujah to God. I, I, I'm, just, I'm just talking about a difference. There's not going to be any sin <laughs> up there. Amen. And if it abides in here, I'm not making it in. Amen. I want to be ready. Amen. I want to be ready. I, I want to be ready. As we look on here to verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we all shall be changed. We're not all of us going to die. <laughs> but some of us are going to be standing, walking, moving, living, out mowing your yard, singing hymns to the Lord and be changed. <laughs> Taken up to meet the Lord in the air. Not all of us are going to die. But we're all going to be changed, Paul said. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet of God shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. <laughs> uh, into another body. Hallelujah to God. I thought, I thought this was wonderful. I... Uh, I want to hear the trump. I, I don't know. It's probably going to sound really loud. And, and I don't know. I kinda, I'm thinking now maybe the pitch of it. I don't know. I just, I, I just want to hear it. And I know it will be distinct. And I'll know it immediately. I want to know it immediately, don't you? Amen. I want to know it immediately. How do I do that? By following that same avenue the apostle Paul was pressing into the same one if by any means I might attain working and moving nothing else is worth missing out on what it's talking about here nothing else I'm working 
by whatever means necessary. <laughs> Lord, help me. Uh, so we shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in great victory. <laughs> because the Lord overcome, we, we will overcome. We don't have to worry about any of this. I mean, all we have to worry about is being ready, pressing on, doing what we can to be right with the Lord and moving on down that right path. But we don't have to. He's going to do all that. <laughs> uh, it's going to be wonderful. Thank the Lord. The key is first. And I, uh, pray for me here. The key is first, as the Apostle Paul has said, Knowing Christ and the power of His resurrection here, right now. That's right. Knowing Christ now and the power of His resurrection. Thank the Lord. We can experience that. And, uh, and then it says, and partaking of His sufferings here. Yes. That's right. That's right. Right now. These things work great. Great things. Lord, help me today. And conforming unto His death here, right now. That's right. And it is being in the pursuit of God, what Paul was doing. He was in pursuit of God. If by any means I might attain. Uh, that is, watching, praying, continually consecrating ourselves unto Him, that He might find us faithful and ready on that day, and that we could be partakers of that glory found in the rapture. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16 says, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead shall rise first. In the story of Lazarus, found in John chapter 11, we find him physically dead, four days, bound in grave clothes, lying in a tomb, with the stone laying against it. Jesus is here seen approaching the gravesite, giving instruction to remove the stone which lay against the entrance of the tomb. Then by his word and through the power of God, Jesus calls Lazarus to come forth. The Bible declares, and he that was dead came forth. Didn't have a choice. Had no choice but to come forth alive, living, and breathing. Amen. There is a power, the power of God that supersedes death, Amen. that supersedes everything. Amen. The worlds the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Amen. When He told Lazarus to come forth, He had no choice but to come forth. Amen. When He tells the enemy to flee, He has no choice but to flee. <laughs> Thank the Lord. That lifelessness can no longer remain when the power of above all powers quickens it. It is important to understand here that when Lazarus was raised, he was raised temporal. He was raised mortal. He wasn't raised like what we have been talking about here. Um, in 1 Corinthians 15. He wasn't raised in that new spiritual body. He wasn't raised that way. So he was raised temporal. He was raised mortal. He was raised to die again another day. But when the dead in Christ shall rise this next time, in that moment of the rapture, the Apostle Paul declares by reading again here, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall all be changed. 
For the corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. Lazarus was raised mortal, temporal. <clears throat> raised to die again another day. Uh, uh, but if Lazarus, upon dying the second time, if he died faithful to the Lord, he will rise again incorruptible. He will rise again with that new body, never to die again, never to experience those things again, but to forever be with the Lord. He'll just be ahead of me just, just barely because I plan on following him up as well as a lot of others that's died. Hallelujah for the Lord. Hallelujah. So he's going to be raised in glory and in power. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be, ever be with the Lord. The Bible describes the day of the Lord as coming as a thief in the night. Found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 2. This making clear the understanding of the time of the rapture. In reference though to the common day thief. He is not going to call before he comes over to rob you. He's not going to say I'm going to come over and really if you would just set the TV by the door. I won't have to come over and in and unhook it or something like that. But he's, he's not going to call you and tell you I'm coming. Oh, Lord, help me today. Right before he comes. Oh, Lord, help me today. <laughs> the Lord's calling right now. <laughs> Lord, help me. He's calling hearts. And he's calling, calling people to come. It's not his will that any perish. Lord, help me here. The, the thief, though, let me get back to my thought. The thief is not going to call before he comes over to rob you. In Matthew 24 and 44, Jesus clarifies by saying, Therefore, be ye also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man comes. And again in verse 42, watch therefore. For you know not what hour your Lord doth come. The thief, though, when coming to burglarize takes by force that which does not belong to it. Right? The thief comes to take what's not his. But on the other hand, Christ as a thief in the night, in regard to the time of His coming, is going to take that, only that which belongs to it. Not that which doesn't belong to it. If you're not ready now, He's not coming for you. He's only coming... For those who are His. And that's the importance of being ready. I want to be one of His. I want Him to come back for me. I want to be ready. Uh, to go and to make it. Up there with Him. Help me Lord. Only those. Only those washed in the blood of the Lamb of God. Are going. For you are bought with a price. 1 Corinthians 6 and 20 there that declared that. But in 2 Peter 3 and 14, the writer makes mention, Be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Why? <laughs> the Apostle Paul expresses in Ephesians 5 and 27 that he might present it to himself a glorious, glorious, glorious church. Not having a spot or a wrinkle or any such thing like that. But that it should be holy and without blemish. But to give further validity to this statement as prophetical truth. The book of Revelation records here in 19, 7 and 8. Let us be glad, rejoice, give honor to him. Him. He's worthy of all honor. All glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife, his wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. I, uh, 
um, she, she hath made herself ready. She's, she's going to... Lord, help me today. She's, she's going to hit the mark of perfection here before going on. She's, she's going to be ready here. <laughs> she's made herself ready here. And the Lord's coming after that spotless and holy and beautiful, beautiful bride. Oh, man. Uh, it, to me, it makes me even more so want to be right and, and be pure and be clean. Because when you think about it as a whole, when you think about the whole organization, when you, when you think about this divine institution and being a part of it and her making herself ready, pure and white, clean and white, not a spot on her, pressed beautifully, shining. <laughs> oh, ready to go. <laughs> desiring, desiring to be taken up to be <laughs> with her Lord yeah. and Master. Oh, thank God. It, it just put something in me, an even greater desire, beyond being right personally, be being part of that beautiful bride. When the Lord comes back to get her, I want to be ready. I want to be ready. <laughs> oh, oh, Lord, help me today. I... I, I, I hope that that through this, I, I, I want to encourage us. Be rapture ready. Amen. I've heard this before, be, perfection being required, and it is required. It is required, but we can find it in Him if we'll seek and search through that same avenue, <laughs> that same path, that same road that the Apostle Paul was, was encouraging. Not to be found in mine own righteousness, but, being, uh, but standing in His by faith. Uh, but, but pressing on and focusing in and not letting anything else influence us, be a strong influence to us to keep us from, from the goal. And that is by any means that I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. That means more than anything in this life. Anything is, is to make it, <laughs> is to make it. Would you stand with me here as we come to a close in this message? I, I want to encourage.